Hello, everyone. My name is Chris Gross, an Excel program manager. So I'll be talking to you guys today about data type APIs, as promised. So I'm going to share my screen here and then get things kicked off. I've got about 15 minutes and I've got more content than I could possibly get through. So I'll try to do this in an expedited version. Um, and of course, always happy to answer questions afterwards in the chat. I'll be talking to you all about data types. The first thing to kind of mention is just the journey that the Excel team's been on in regard to data types. So historically speaking, Excel supported what we now call a number of basic values, and those have been things that you're probably familiar with, like text, text strings, numbers, booleans, and then there's a formatting layer on top of that. And you know, the entire world has been running and businesses operating off of all of these formulae that make use of these basic data types. But on the team, we've been thinking about what it means to support a future where the grid can extend itself and understand much more than that. And so that's where the journey of data types has come in. And so along the way, we've been, um, if you've been following the product for the past couple of years, we've been adding a number of data sources as we build out our architecture. We started out with geography and stocks, as you can see, cards for here. Then recently, we uh, penned a deal with Wolfram, and we've been able to provide data from them. And so this is on one hand been able to allow us to extend our architecture deeply and add more rich support for all of the experiences that you can find today while also offering a wider domain of data and then of course you know it wasn't enough to just have our own data sources we started on the journey um, recently of adding URL's data sources too and so if you have power bi you can hook that in through what we call organizational data and then there's also the ability for power query but really we've been missing something and, and it's been something that we've been excited to you know, release and announce, um, and we did announce it last Ignite, and that's the ability for you all to kind of extend the heart of all of these structures and make your own um, without having to use something like Power Query or Power BI or, or you know, pen a deal with us on the team and integrate with our large service architecture. So the next thing I want to cover real quick is just a bit of the anatomy about data types because um, I'll use some terms today just loosely, and that's because it, I breathe this stuff every single day and I'm constantly talking about it, but it might be something that you're not familiar with. So if I use a term, these are generally what they mean. Um, so the first thing is when you look at a data type, and specifically these are called entity values in the grid, you'll notice that they have an icon and then some display text. Um, these are things that you can extend, uh, and we'll get more to that in a little bit later. And then the other, the other main surface area that you'll users are interacting with is what we call the card. Um, probably a little bit self-explanatory of a name, but it's worth at least calling out. Now within those cards, um, you might be able to notice that there's a whole bunch of information contained with them or metadata. And so we call these things fields and field values. Uh, and these are really, again, part of what's important to Excel because it's awesome that I can have a card, but when you're an end user, you're probably going to want to make use of this within the grid so that you can do your own analysis. So we have a number of ways that you can actually extract that data as an end user and get it to the grid, whether that be through the um, on object UI that you can see here, or you can write your own formulas with something we call dot notation. And that's not you know, the only supported things. We also have deep supported integration with many of the feature sets. So right here, what you're seeing is kind of a quick example of our ability to have um, sort and filtering functionality that's just built, built in, baked into the product. And if you create an entity value, it's just generally supported within those infrastructures too. Now, some of you might be wondering why, you know, why we're doing this, and I explained a little bit about that, but one of the major reasons is, and the impetus for it, is about increasing developer velocity. Uh, we saw a number of patterns over the years of things that folks are trying to do either through the spreadsheets themselves or building add-ins to do. And so we wanted to allow the ability to kind of get the job done a little bit faster. And so if you're thinking about making use of these APIs, it's rather simple to do. Um, all you need to do is you need to, for example, if you have a REST API, you can return a JSON structure. And then we have um, a documented schema. And if you apply that schema to your data, then all you have to do is set those values and pass them into the grid. And it's really as simple as that. And I'll show a few examples today that kind of show um, a little bit about how that works. Now, it's also important to talk about the different building blocks that are exposed because, you know, I certainly talked a lot about that entity value structure because that's kind of the main one that comes top of mind when you think about data types. But we've also added support for a number of different other composable building blocks that we've built along the way that support all these experiences. So I mentioned entity values, which is kind of that object-like structure. But within that, you might have um, certain scenarios where you've got a number and you want to format supported with it. So you might have something that's a date, and when you extract that to the grid, you actually want to show that as a date. Um, 
Today, if you don't use these new objects called formatted number values, you traditionally do that by setting a format on the cell. But these are a little different because that format is actually associated with the value itself. And so it can travel through calc. Um, it can also help with uh, reducing errors too because those values themselves have an opinion on how they want to be formatted, which means that we can trigger things like green arrows if somebody, say, formats a, a dollar amount as a date when they didn't mean to. Uh, images inside the grid are another thing that we've added support for. So we've always had the ability to have stuff floating on the grid, but within those um, entity values, you might have noticed that there were there were images inside of there. And so these images can live on their own or inside of these entity values. And that's true of any of these things. They can all be composable within each other um, as it makes sense. The next one is improved errors. So everybody's probably familiar with the the years where all we really had was you know 90 percent of the errors you got were pound value and that wasn't very descriptive um, we have a whole bunch of new errors that have been introduced with data types and so we've added support for extending those and making use of them um, as well as kind of the experience you can see here where sometimes you, we can add different interactions that a user can take so that they can quickly fix that error a little bit easier and the last one on my list today is arrays and entities. So within those entity values, we've also added support for arrays in the grid in the past. And so inside of an entity value, you can actually have array structures. So you can see an example here where I've got an array of years and um, the table that, the table that gets automatically generated in that card view that's associated with it. And of course, I can pull that into the grid too. So just a little bit about the APIs. If you're you know, interested in the stuff I'm talking about today, what you're gonna wanna do is go research the values as JSON API. This is very much like range.values if you've used it before, except the only difference is that it returns augmented information about the historical values, but it also has support for these new data types. Um, so in this example on the bottom, you can see if before I was writing something that had one and then the term llama because I couldn't actually put an image of a llama in the cell, well, now I can do that or I could add my own structure to if I wanted. And really, this allows you forget to get and set values within the grid, just like range.values always has. A little bit about the schema because it would be a miss to not at least touch base on that to give you a kind of an idea of how it works. Um, they have a schema and JSON's the format probably as implied from the, the API name. Um, the main thing that drives a lot of these definitions is what we call the type field. And so within that we've added um, a, we've added an enumeration where you can actually go and quickly access and see the different types of type values you can set. So here you can see we've got those objects I talked about before of web image formatted number values and then entities. And then of course there's special properties that go with each of those, but I certainly don't have enough time today to talk about all of those, but I'll show a quick demo of some new ones we've introduced. So if you're interested in learning more, um, I would highly suggest checking out the link up above, aka.ms slash data type dev, uh, if you're interested in learning more. Now the next thing to talk about is custom functions. Uh, as I mentioned, kind of the heart and soul of Excel is its formula language. Um, it's something that everyone makes use of every single day when they want to do their analysis. And you all are probably familiar with custom functions and their ability to be extended. Well, all those data types that I showed you are generally supported within custom functions too. Uh, and so another thing I kind of wanted to show was a little bit about how um, your journey of doing analysis in Excel can be transformed and augmented if you're an end user by making use of data types. Uh, so this was for a demo that we actually built at Ignite, but historically speaking, you'll notice that um, generally people have flat tabular data. So you've got a whole bunch of columns with rows in them, and that's how you represent your data. With something like data types, you can actually package that up into one singular entity. And again, functions are another good way of possibly creating these as well as maybe building your UI. But in this case, um, you'll actually watch, uh, it was actually Phoebe who created this demo. You'll watch her kind of create her own custom function and then pass in a whole bunch of information. And then from this custom function, we're actually able to build those structures that you can kind of see listed here. And again, there's a picture of that array value one that I was mentioning. So um, I think it's pretty slick because it just kind of shows you all the information at a, you know, at a really brief moment's notice. And if you want to extract any individual value, the interactions are just kind of built in. So it's as simple as a one click. Um, and of course, this is kind of what your data would probably look like after you're done converting all of those into their individual types, as opposed to before where you, you kind of had to do it all, all on your own and you really didn't have associated data contained with a singular package. So the last thing I'm gonna leave with today is a quick demo. We've added some additional um, metadata to the data types in particular. And so I'm gonna show you how we've added data types that allow you to set some card specific properties. Um, Cause you might've noticed that the card layouts uh, don't look like some of the other ones that you can see, for example, on the Wolfram side. 
And then there's also the ability to hide individual fields from the client. Um, and I'll show some of that too. So I'm actually going to flip over to Excel where I've got a pre curated demo um, and I'm going to be making use of a tool that we've built today to kind of show you a little bit about how this structure works really quick about this tool. What it does is it allows me to set and clear data types and kind of look at all of that information that's contained within there and modify it. Um, so that's what I'll be using today. So first thing is just a general look at the structure. So I've created a fake entity here. It's meant to be of myself and just purely illustrative, um, but you can see one of the first things that might jump out to you is the additional card sections that we have here. So before you didn't have those card sections and everything was just kind of a flat list and laid out, um, and you also couldn't organize the individual properties, and I'll talk a little bit about that too. But you can see I've got some general information here about my favorite stuff and then maybe some contact information. Now, one of the things I can do is this profile picture here. Um, this is actually shown in line, and really I want that to be at the top, and that's a field that we've introduced under a new card layout property that's called um, uh, the hero image. So what I'll do in this, this case is I'm just going to click this button to make that profile the actual main image. Oh, and the other thing to mention that I forgot to, sorry, was the sub label there. You'll notice that it says profile and there's this dot and it says picture. Every single field also has the addition of something we call the sub label that you can set to. But anyway, I want to make this the main image. So what I'll do is I'll set this and don't mind the, the rendering issue I'm having today. I've got my own special builds of Excel and so I've got bugs that come with that. But the thing to notice is that that image is now actually located at the top of the card as opposed to in line where it was before, which in our opinion gives a much richer experience and kind of looks a lot better in my opinion than, than just kind of in line or, or some of the other ways you might do it. One of the other things that we changed was the ability to order the fields within the card. Uh, so if you've tried this API out before, you might have noticed that we always sort things alphabetically. But we have another field. You can actually change the structure of it. So in this case, let's say I want to make the um, the animal, my favorite animal is, is one of the top properties. So I just click that button, it'll move it to the top. Now if I set that data again, uh, we should see the animals listed. So again, all of this is going to be inside the JSON structure, which I have here. Um, and in particular, that's going to be under something we call the card layout. And so we've added the sections uh, entry. And so within these objects, you can kind of see how things are differently laid out. And in particular, there's something we call the properties. And this shows this correspond is a one-to-one -one correspondence with all those fields and says, tells the card how to, how to lay that stuff out. Uh, now, the last thing I'm going to demo is some of the interactions I said about setting metadata to hide things. So, for example, you might be doing something like pulling a whole bunch of information from a database, and there's information that you might want available to you as you're debugging, but you don't necessarily want to make available to the end user. You still want it in the payload, but you don't want it to be readily accessible. So that's where these set of fields are going to come in. Um, the first one is one called card view. So if I uncheck this and hit set again, you'll notice that I can actually hide that field from card view. So it won't display in the card view. But if I were to go over here and use dot notation, it's still available and accessible if I wanted to extract it into the grid. But let's say you don't want that to, to be extractable to the grid. Or let's say you don't want it to autocomplete. You still want it to be there, again, for maybe debugging purposes, but you don't want anyone to really know what the name of that field is. So I can quickly kick, click set again. Um, oops, and I set the wrong cell, so I'll just move over to this one. Notice that I don't have it listed here, but if I actually call this, it'll still be extractable. And then, of course, the final thing is you can also remove it from dot notation altogether. So this action, once I click that, um, we should actually see me now get a pound field error because Excel's not going to allow that to be extracted to the grid. It's still contained in there, but um, Excel's not, it's not going to be accessible to the end user shown in the UI or anything. So one other thing to mention is that within Script Lab, um, I know that's a place where we offer a lot of greatly great examples and tutorials on how to get started with a lot of the APIs. We've actually got some that are going to be coming out soon, so look out within the client to kind of see those. And the last thing I'll, I'll leave with before I, I hand it over to, I, I think, Phoebe, is that one of the things we're actively doing is looking for new partners to kind of collaborate with who want to make use of these APIs. And in particular, we're trying to have a big announcement at build in May if possible. And so what we want to be able to do is highlight customer stories and build out some cool demos of stuff you guys think are interesting or useful to, to your given scenarios. And of course, we're also actively looking for feedback. So when you make use of these APIs, since they aren't just currently in preview right now, we want to make sure that we're building the right thing and that we're building out new APIs to enable any scenarios that um, you might have need for. So that kind of covers everything I had today, and thanks for listening. 
thanks, Chris. That was really great to see. It's uh, really cool to see how you know we're moving from you know just having simple data types to now you can work with really complex data types from your add-ins. Um, uh, I was just curious. Do you want folks to like drop an email or something if they want to connect with you in the chat or? Because you mentioned yeah, you want to connect emails, with some folks. Yeah, the email email is probably the best way. You know, my email is chgross at microsoft.com. So if you, you want to send me an email, go for it. But yeah, I'm looking for we're looking for any sort of feedback or communications and happy to set up calls and talk about things with any of the partners today. Okay. Very cool. All right.